Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back, everybody, to Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I are with our favorite brain whisperer, <laughs> Stephen Campbell. Hello. <laughs> So Steve, to good to see you out. again. Um, Thank you. You know, every year the holidays oh. the holidays arrive, and it it seems like to me they get longer and longer. We, you know, from yeah. Thanksgiving to Hanukkah to Christmas to New Year's, and then even almost into February with yeah. with the holidays. But and that's really, even living out, that's, that's even living out Festivus. Yeah. <laughs> Very stressful. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it really seems to be the month of December. The whole month seems to be holiday oh, time. And the holidays are always high with emotions. Expectations, yes. Yep. Of all kinds, good and bad, yeah. up and down. Yeah. 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 What do you yeah. do? What do you do for the holidays? Well, I think one of the most exciting discoveries that psychologists made in the last 60 years is the fact that our feelings, our emotions, are not coming from the holidays. They're not coming from Christmas. They're not coming from Hanukkah. They're not coming from the New Year's. They're not coming from New Year's resolutions. Do you know where they're coming from? They're coming from what we say to ourselves about the holidays and what we say to ourselves about New Year's and Hanukkah and all this. Our feelings are primarily coming from our beliefs. So you have very different beliefs for about the holidays. I do too. And our feelings are coming from that. People think that our feelings come directly. No, no, no. They come from what we're saying to ourselves about the holidays. Now, why is that so exciting to me as a psychologist? Because you could replace those feelings. Is it easy? Of course not. If you're 74 years old, like I am, I've had 74 holidays. Some of them are really great. Some of them are really hard. But I can replace what I'm saying about those, feel, those holidays and the feelings follow. So basically so, what you're saying, are, are you saying that uh, uh, we have preconceived notions about uh, uh, Uncle Albert and Aunt Bessie? Yes. Okay. And I, I don't think yeah. I have either one of them, so I'm probably yeah. pretty safe in my yeah. world now. Uh, yeah. But so we're walking and say, oh, another day with this mm -hmm. uh, uncle. Awful or, person yeah. that I can't stand. Mm -hmm. Call it spade, spade. Right. And yet that's the expectation. We have kind of a Norman Rockwell kind of everything is perfect and wonderful. And let's face it, we live in a broken world and we're broken people. And we have feelings that drive us absolutely crazy. Why am I feeling this way? I should not feel that way. We should ourselves to death. And so what do you do with that? What do you do with that? So that's what I want to talk about, about over the next few minutes. What do you do with those feelings? What are some of the feelings that people have? It isn't how it should be. My holidays or my Christmas should be this way and that way, and they're not this way. And what am I doing wrong? Or what's going on with this? Or I'm lonely, or I hate crowds, or I'm exhausted, or I haven't accomplished anything this year. The holidays are usually at the end of the year. We look back at our, at our year and we say, oh, what have I accomplished? Or it's just too much. So what, what do you do with all those expectations? And let's go back to what I said in the beginning. Your feelings are coming primarily, not completely, but primarily from what you're saying about really anything, the holidays or anything like that. So what do you do with that? Okay, number one, realize, ready, it's okay to feel these things. We condemn ourselves for our feelings. We say, I shouldn't feel this way and I shouldn't feel that when as the holidays come, they become more, more and more acute. The suicide rate during the holidays just goes right through the roof. So we're not alone in this. So number one, no condemnation about what you're feeling. Because we don't need to do that. We don't need that. We condemn ourselves anyway. And most of what we say to ourselves is negative crap. So 
number one, say to yourself, okay, I'm feeling this, but I'm not going to condemn myself for it. I don't like feeling it, so what do I do with it? Okay? Okay. So that's number one. Number two, realize that your feelings are coming from what you're saying about the holidays. So let's imagine in the past you've had horrible holidays or something really happened or something really is bad, et cetera, et cetera, so forth. Realize that our past is in our minds only if we want it to be. Did you hear what I said? I'll say that again. Our past is in our minds only when we want it to be. So I remember back in 2008 when I was let go as an instructor. I was devastated. And I was 62. And it was the beginning of the Great Recession here in America where the housing market just crashed along with the rest of the world. And I didn't think I would ever get another job. And I was devastated by what was going to happen. I sat down with my wife and I told her what had happened. She looked at me and she said, you know what, Steve? I'm just going to believe that something wonderful is going to happen. How do you know? I'm just going to believe it. I'm going to lock on to that, and you should too. And I did. I locked on to something wonderful happened. Of course, what happened was I began speaking, and and now I'm traveling around the world speaking and selling all these books. But it started with Mary saying to me, something great's going to happen, and I locked on to that. Here's another principle about the brain. Number one, your brain, your, your feelings are coming from your beliefs. Number two, your brain locks on to what you lock on to. You decide. So if I locked on to, okay, I'm 62, life is over for me, my brain would kick into that. And then the scary part is my brain starts rewiring that to where I believe it and everything I do contributes to that. But I switched that and I said, okay, I'm not working for anyone now, so I can do what I want. What do I love doing? I love teaching, and I'll teach anywhere, and I love writing, and so I'll do all this stuff, and it all worked out, okay? So number one, your feelings are coming from what you're saying. Number two, your brain locks on to what you decide to lock on to. I've shared this with you, this story so many times before. When I was a little boy, my dad taught me how to ride a bicycle. And he took me out to this road, took the train, he was off, and he pointed to a rock out there in the road. He said, you see that rock, Steve? Don't run into that rock. And I wanted to really impress my dad, so I got down on my bike. I locked onto the rock, pedaling like mad, so I would not lock, rock, run into it. What happened? Bam, right into the rock. That's the way your brain works. So when you lock onto... The holidays coming up are going to be horrible. Your brain is going to look for ways for that to be absolutely true. But you can also say, okay, I'm going to look at the holidays differently. Yes, in the past they have been difficult, but that doesn't mean they have to be difficult this time. So what can I do? Well, here's some advice, some little tips. Number one, be willing to ask other people to help you. Be willing to ask other people to help you. Number two, when you need to get away, get away. Go take a nap. Go for a walk. Take yourself out for a really nice meal. Be good to yourself. Number three, all those expectations don't necessarily need to come true. It doesn't have to be the perfect Christmas because there's no such thing. There's no such thing as a perfect Hanukkah. In fact, perfect is one of our worst enemies because it becomes such a high expectation that if it's not perfect, we really get down on ourselves. And number four, realize this, that your feelings, again, aren't coming from the holidays. They are coming from your self-talk. 
They're coming from what you are saying. You are in control. Not the holidays. You are. Well, Steve, what about what other people say to me? Listen, my dear people, what others say to you during the holidays do not become a part of you until you agree with them. Let me say that again. What others say to you during the holidays or any other time do not become a part of who you are until you agree with them. That's so exciting. That frees you up. Did you know that you don't have one self-image? You have millions. Some of them are really high. Some of them are really low. But you know where those self-images are coming from? They're coming from your self-talk. They're coming from what you are saying to yourself about yourself. So during the holidays, if people are getting on your case, walk away. You don't have to get in their face. But just say, you know what? I'm going to go take a nap. I'm going to go take a walk. I'm going to take a drive. And be willing to ask people to help you. Because if it's hard for you, you can bet your bottom dollar it's also hard for them. So let's conclude by saying this. The holidays don't begin with Christmas or Hanukkah or New Year's. They begin up here. They begin with what you are saying. You're in control. I think the most exciting discovery that psychology has made since it be began back in 1890 with William James is that you can control what you're thinking. And that in turn, ready, controls what you're feeling. Your feelings don't have to be in control of you. They only are when you let them. It's your decision. Wow. That's exciting. It is exciting. It is exciting because too often we tell ourselves what we expect. Yes. And we don't tell ourselves what we want. Uh-huh. So I want to have a wonderful reunion with all my relatives mm -hmm. as opposed to saying to myself, oh, God, I have to Uncle Joe and Aunt uh, yeah. whatever. Oh, how am I going to deal with this again? Yeah. What a different message we give yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our brain works on that. It works on that. And if it gets too much, as I said, I, I, so I take a nap. I say, excuse me, I'm going to take a nap. And everyone says, that's fine. That's sure. just what daddy does. Or I take a walk or I take myself out to a really nice meal. And I read, I go home, go someplace and read a nice book, take a walk in the woods. If it gets too hard, just leave for a while. And I, I, I bet, but we shouldn't say, you know, I'm going to take a nap. I'll see you in 12 months. <laughs> that's probably no. that's, that's not exactly what you mean, right? That won't work. No, that won't, that work. won't work. I'm yeah. going to remember that. Today, <laughs> I, I, I would come back close, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, great advice, and and Steve, I I appreciate your practical uh, tips. Mm. Yeah. Not just the, not just the mental tip of. Yeah. Yeah. You know, positive yeah. self-talk, but the practical tip of walk away, go for a walk in the woods, ask for help. I think ask for help. it's really hard to ask for help. Yeah. 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 If you have a certain personality, it really is very difficult. But Mary's yeah. getting better at that. I'll tell you. During three Thanksgivings where we had everyone over at our house. She was so stressed out, we had to take her to the hospital three times. Oh, my God. And I took her to the ER, and they had to give her some stuff. And finally, our daughter said to mom, my wife, Mary, mom, we don't need to have Thanksgiving here. Oh, <gasps> really? No. Why don't we just not do it? And so the following Thanksgiving, we simply wrote a really, really nice note. 
we're just not going to have Thanksgiving this time. And my brother said, let's have it at our house. And we did. And it was wonderful. And we haven't had Thanksgiving at our house since then. And it's great. It's great. Mary and I have a little Thanksgiving. And then we go to my brother's house or my other brother's house. It's wonderful. And nobody yeah. got hurt. The only time <laughs> they got hurt is when Mary ended up in the hospital. Sure. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and we've, I think we tend to forget that um, one of the stress points of holidays is not just the people. That seems to me to be the yeah. biggest uh, stress point, dealing with yeah. the, all the people yeah. and personalities and conflicts and histories and all that. Yeah. yeah. But the other side of it is just what you pointed out, and it is the stress of hosting, uh, buying presents. I mean, there's all kinds of things at each mm -hmm. holiday that are, mm -hmm. I, I will call them physical. Uh, mm -hmm. My mother solved the, the Thanksgiving problem for her. How did she do it? When she decided, she heard about, uh, it was a delicatessen yeah. uh, in, in town. Yeah. And she, for the first time, she, she found that they will cook your turkey. Yeah. She had, and, and for the last 20 years, she had a turkey delivered, and it was always perfectly perfect. Cooked. And it came with gravy. And if you wanted vegetables, you could order the vegetables. It was, it was the best thing that ever happened to her. Yeah. Yeah. On Thanksgiving every year. Yeah. Yeah. Because she didn't have the preparation and all that. The stress of that. That's right. She yeah. she could relax and enjoy the holiday. Also, one there other thing been... that, you, that you didn't mention, Steve, uh, uh, but you implied, and that's why I always. Yeah. Like about what you do is you you give very practical advice okay but um uh if you think you're coming to the table with some preconceived notions if there are 20 people there there are 19 other preconceived sets of preconceived notions That's some right. of which you're causing the stress to them yeah. uh, yeah. uh and, and all these cross currents so uh, uh i like to look at the dynamics of everybody not only what ticks yeah. me off, but what ticks everybody else off. And that's yeah. almost half the fun of getting together. Yeah. Yeah. You have feelings everywhere and they're sort of floating around the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. some of them are crazy. And some of them feel they drive us nuts. Why am I feeling this way? Feelings don't work like thoughts. They just sort of, they don't come out, but they don't come out willy nilly. They're coming up from, from our thoughts, from our beliefs. And, and that's why I find cognitive psychology so exciting because it says you don't have to be the victim here. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. Great, great so, advice for the holidays. And yeah. again, holidays go on forever and ever. That's so. right. Always will be. So, yeah. So thank you. So we don't have, yeah. So we don't have Thanksgiving at our house and Mary absolutely loves it. Well, it's great. Then, then I think it's time for us to say to our audience, go home and, in, or go to somebody else's home and enjoy the holidays. And don't right. sweat the small stuff, okay? Yeah. Just know that yeah. you're going to have a good go. time. And if you're not, either ask for help or take a nap. That's my takeaways. Yeah. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.